Sunday night in the city of Milwaukee tonight. The student section's going crazy. Cincinnati, number one in town, and the Eagles only one game back of the Bearcats in the American Division of Conference USA. Bob Carpenter, Larry Conley, welcome to downtown Milwaukee. They're excited about this one. Why not? Their team has handled Cincinnati pretty well in recent years here, partner, but Kenyon Martin wasn't playing the way then that he is right now. He's playing as well as anybody in the nation. Let's take a look at some of the highlights so far this year. The other night against Memphis, a triple-double, if you will. Points, rebounds, and blocks. He's continued to do that. That's getting rebounds and throwing them down, but his shot-blocking ability, the best in the history of Cincinnati basketball. They go out faster than they come in. But his biggest, I think his biggest attribute of the year has been his offensive game. He has really picked it up. He leads Conference USA in field goal percentage. 58% for the senior out of Dallas, Kenyon Martin. Beat Michael, might be the second best all-around player in the country. Great perimeter defense, and he can score, well, as well. 15 a game, 27 steals to lead the Bearcats. Marquette. Last year, they were 14 and 15. Because of Brian Wardle, they're a lot better this year. He's the Conference USA Player of the Week. He'll go over 1,000 points in a couple of weeks, and he's coming off 30 against North, 31 against North Carolina, Charlotte. He is a sharp-shooting three-point guy. He is indeed, and the thing I like about Wardle is that he's improved his numbers every year. As we take a look at the coaches, Tom Crean in his first season to Marquette, a former Michigan State assistant coach, and I think one of the up-and-comers, Bob. Yeah, he was with Tom Izzo there, and his first time around in East Lansing, he was actually on the staff of Judd Heathcote. Bob Huggins, his 19th year overall. Those are his Cincinnati numbers. His career winning percentage of 736, seventh best among active coaches. Now, Marquette, very good against Cincinnati. Three of the last four on this floor. And this is a game when the Bearcats could stumble on the road. Everybody else, it seems, in the top 25 did this weekend. Let's see if Cincinnati can avoid the pitfalls. Opening tap goes to the Bearcats. They run a half-court motion when they're not in transition. Marquette's in a straight man-to-man -man defense. And Coach said we might see some 3-2 zone from them tonight to try to force Cincinnati into outside shooting. Great look, and that's Kenyon Martin feeding Pete Michael for the first basket. Bob, we talked about his rebounding ability, his shot-blocking ability, and his shooting ability. How about the passing? Great look inside. Cincinnati in the customary man-to-man. -man. Well, Marquette can be delivered offensively. Seems like all these Wisconsin teams are. Here's Wardle going baseline left, but Pete Michael stops him. It's going to be tough for Brian to have a big night scoring with that man guarding him. Henry, the kick to Wardle, and the three just rimmed down on him. Kenyon Martin with the outlet for the 6'9", two-guard, Dermar Johnson, who's being guarded right now by 6'2", John Cliff. A very big mismatch right there. I would be surprised if Johnson doesn't try to take him inside some. There he goes. Michael to the weave of Johnson. Nice play by the trailing guard defensively. And the Bearcats will throw it in with 19 on the shot clock. Cincinnati 17-1. Scoring about 20 points a game more than their opponents. Shooting 50% almost all the time. Though they've been under 50 the last three games. That field goal defense is almost unfair. 36%. Logan, got it. And what Bob is, Huggins told me an hour ago, if they hit those shots, there's no way they'll lose this game. Oh, he's absolutely right. And Logan, who shoots 41% from beyond the arc out there, delivers it better than anybody on this Cincinnati club. 5-0 Bearcats. Wardle back to the wing for John Cliff. Air ball, way long. Miller a touch, and then falling out of bounds with it. Steve Logan of Cincinnati. Kind of a strange play. It looked like Logan was trying to gather his balance, and he had a player, DeMar Johnson, standing right there he could have thrown the ball to. Tom Crean looks over some of his scouting report. Well, they worked very hard in practice today trying to do something against the Cincinnati offense. Well, it's not often that you see a film session combined with the shoot around on game day total nearly two hours. He told me at breakfast this morning, he says, at practice this week, oh. he says, all I tried to do was create chaos. He said, we had eight guys playing against five because that's what I feel like when I play Cincinnati. That was Cliff on the miss and Dermar Johnson the other way. What a freshman year he's having, 13 a game. And Cincinnati leads seven zip. Not the kind of start the home coach wanted. We've got a Bearcat foul away from the ball. Cincinnati got off to a very quick start. Much of what they have done this year to every club that they have played with DeMar Johnson taking the ball inside. I want folks, everybody, everybody out there to realize this guy is 6'9", putting it on the floor and taking it to the hoop. 
Ryan Ward will throw it in after the foul by Cincinnati's Jermaine Tate. On the perimeter, John Miller. And another foul. It's like Logan this time. Well, the Bearcats have jumped on their opponents in almost every game they've played this year. They've gotten out to, to such quick starts, it's hard for teams to come back on them. And then Bob Huggins turns up that defensive crank. I'll tell you what, they're hard to get by. Cordell Henry, sophomore out of Whitney Young in Chicago. A very good friend of Quentin Richardson from the high school days in Chi-Town. Aluminum Namaka. And back on top to Cordell Henry. Marquette hasn't had a real good look yet, except for that layup that was missed. That was Fletcher nearly falling on the perimeter. And a spin move on the baseline, but well before that, John Cliff stepped out of bounds. And another empty trip for the Golden Eagles. Bob, right now, Marquette in danger of getting the same side of treatment that they got down in Cincinnati when Cincinnati got off to a 9 to nothing start. A basket here would give Cincinnati a 9 nothing start, or a 3 would give them 10. And the Bearcats won that game by 19 on January the 8th. Here's Fletcher, much better as a sub than he is as a starter. Lost the handle on the way up. Miller, straight ahead. Cordell Henry against Logan. Missed it. Wardle, back to a rebound. The scoop, and he hit the bottom of the glass. And finally, Aluma Namaka finishing for Marquette. Pretty good effort that time by Marquette. They had three guys battling underneath to keep that one going. Here's the field goal. Cincinnati three or four already. Martin strong, too much so with the turnaround. Long rebound for Dermar Johnson. There's Pete Michael. He had a little bit of the flu a couple days ago. Logan, oh, that's bad news for Marquette. He's two of two from three-point range. And Steve Logan's also taken care of the ball. 12 turnovers, his last nine games coming into this one. 3.5 assist to turnover ratio. That's incredible. Anything more than two to one is awesome. 10-2, Cincinnati. Not quite four minutes in. Very little pressure from Cincinnati. Kind of surprising. They're playing a little zone right now. And in traffic, losing it, John Cliff. Here's Logan transition. Bounce pass on the angle for DeMar Johnson. Finally, Martin trailing. Gets down into the paint. That's what's so good about Cincinnati. They're fast in transition, but they're strong in the half court. Johnson. Oh, man, do they look good. See, there's that back-end post-up move right there. John Cliff at 6'2", cannot guard DeMar Johnson on that post-up move. Almost a steal by DeMar. Ball out to midcourt. Cordell Henry lets it roll out. Four minutes and 16 seconds of Cincinnati domination. The Cats on the road by 10. Well, we've got a pretty big Sunday going here on ESPN2. Tulane by 11 over UAB earlier. Now it's Marquette Cincinnati, but it will be big tomorrow night. Big Monday presented by Bud Light. Two of the top six. Huskies in the orange in the Big East. Then we go to Colorado and Kansas, and the Buffaloes have won a couple straight in the Big 12. After Sports Center, Colorado State and Utah in the Mountain West. And Larry Conley, how about the point guard matchup in the Big East tomorrow night? One of the better ones, and I want to tell you that Jason Hart is playing so much better this year for Syracuse. It's given Jim Beheim a totally different look with his basketball team. I think one of the reasons they're undefeated at this point, Elamina simply picked up where he left off last year. Here comes Marquette down by 10. Look at how Cincinnati extends the defense. The big guys are 25 feet from the basket. There's the mugging and the steal, but getting it back is Henry. Here's Wardle. They need him to start hitting some. I'll tell you, Cincinnati just attacks the basketball. Something Marquette worked on today is trying to keep those people from swarming the ball. And I'm talking about the Cincinnati defense. They just attack the basketball. And they don't really worry about the guy who picks and rolls. They just go where the ball is. Exactly. Here's Wardle. Turnover right into the hands of Kenyon Martin. Here's Michael. Well, that's a shooter's touch. He just line drives it up there, and it still went in. Pete Michael has four. So does Johnson. Logan has six. Martin hasn't scored, but so what if you're Bob Huggins? Well, Bob, I think that gets back to the reason why they're number one right now. They have such great balance, great size, depth. They have good, quick guards, and they can really defend. Couple of Marquette turnovers for Cincinnati points. Wardle misses again, and there's Logan at six foot down there rebounding. Over the ball game, Kenny Satterfield, number 11, just dishing off there. And a Cincinnati turnover gives it back to Marquette. Tom Green will check in Brian Baroni. Cincinnati 
How about that the last two games? Only four turnovers per game, forcing 19 a game. Those two contests. Yeah, but that guy right there, Pete Michael, may be as good a defender as there is in the nation. We talk so much about Kenyon Martin and all the other players. I don't think it was an exaggeration for you to say that he might be the second best player in the nation. He could very well be. You know, if he was with a different club, he'd probably be averaging 25 a game. Yep. Ryan Baroni, that name sounds familiar. Yeah, he's out of College Station, Texas. He is Tony's son, running the point now for Marquette. He's going to try to blow by center field. Too tall on the bank. And the rebound, Michael. Outlets. Here's Satterfield taking on Baroni, kicking to Logan as both defenders went to the ball. And Steve Logan is three for three beyond the arc. Kenny Satterfield with an assist. They are number two in Cahia's Conference USA at five per game. Tom Green has to have a timeout. It is 17 to two. 17-2, the number one team in the nation looks even better than that right now, if it's possible. Is there a higher than number one ranking? I don't know. Marquette's one of nine from the field. Logan has three threes, and Cincinnati is hitting on all cylinders on a Sunday night in Milwaukee. Bob, here's that defense I was talking about. Look at Cincinnati swarm the ball. Wardle can't even get rid of it. They're fortunate to get it back after the ball is slapped away right there. But once again, he tries to work his way inside. No, thank you. Cincinnati's going to allow, not allow anything down inside. To such a strong defensive club. And they did that great half-court defense without fouling or even coming close to it. Well, consider that they have 36% field goal percentage defense, and that ranks number eight in the nation, and they're the seventh-best shooting team in the nation. It's almost not fair when they're going like this. Pete Michael, his practice the other day, has been sick to his stomach for a couple of days. May not be able to play 30 or 35 minutes tonight. Into the ball game, John Harris, one of the good rebounders for Marquette. What Marquette needs right now is some offense. Somebody's, somebody's got to start getting hot here. Moroni, they've, they've got nothing on the perimeter. Cincinnati extending the defense all over the place. Here's Namaka for Baroni. one of the shot clock. And Kenyon Martin's got the rebound, and he took a bump on the way down. Looks like Brian Wardle with his first. Bob, this has been total domination by the Bearcats in this first seven minutes of play. I mean, Wardle just can't even get free. We're trying to isolate on him and show just how tough it is for him to try to get around. Look at that defense out there by Pete Michael. Bob Huggins says, I can take Michael and Tate, let those two guys guard the five and not worry about anybody else. <laughs> he might be right. The defensive end for Marquette for number 34, John Harris, their outstanding rebounder out of Edwardsville, Illinois. Martin too strong on the bank. Rebound, Aluma Namaka, and here comes Baroni trying to run some point for Marquette. Well, they're taking away all their confidence. They've got to have something positive happen here. Michael just kind of bellying up on the drive of John Cliff. And Keith Michael will get his first, and for Cincinnati, their third team five. Bob, a subtle little point about Bob Huggins' defense. In the past, one of the things he's always been very tough with in double teaming the basketball and swarming to the ball is their hand usage. And I'm talking about the defenders out there. They use their bodies now. They body up on guys and don't use their hands as much to reach or try to grab for the ball. And you know what that means, Larry. They're playing defense with their feet. Absolutely. Their feet are moving all the time. Harris. And don't think Kenyon Martin didn't adjust that shot. Jermaine take the rebound. Here comes Kenny Satterfield for UC. The dump down, Martin drawing triple coverage. Satterfield thought about the three. Taking it from the left side, a little bit long it is from Jamar Johnson. Kenyon Martin in traffic, twisting and missing. Johnson a chance over the baseline, and it stays with the Bearcats. They will check Steve Logan back into the game. Pete Michael will get a breather, so they'll get a little bit smaller here on the perimeter with Logan and Satterfield in the game, six foot, six two, respectively. Yeah, but number two and number three in Conference USA in assist. How about that for two guards in the league, second and third? Well, the numbers don't lie. There's Tate from Martin. Jermaine Tate putting it on the floor and moving beautifully. Tate very quick to the basket. Cincinnati team is so, so good. Well, they, they can beat you outside. They've shown that early. That time they go inside. Brody the bounce pass to Harris. Look at the denial. Look at the denial. So hard to catch a pass. Even if it's not deflected, it, it sometimes is so hard to make the pass that forces the offense. Look how far out Marquette's running their offense. 
From the left side, they can't get that one down as John Cliff misses it. On a pass from David Diggs. Center field to kick for Logan. Tate looking left. Looking to Martin, who directs the ball. He told him, pass it over to DeMar, now post up. Shot clock running down to 15. The Bradley Center very quiet. The Cats have taken the boisterous three-game crowd out of this game. Satterfield, the long miss on the three. Good block out by Mark Hedda time. Everybody found a man. Tom Green worked a lot on that in practice yesterday and today. That was Lumen Lamaka out of Sweden with the rebound. Cincinnati has Steve Logan's three makes from beyond the arc. And Gordel and company unable to hit for the home team. You know, Bob, when you get this kind of pressure, it's very difficult to dribble against somebody who's always in your lap. You've got to keep your dribble alive, though. Once you pick that ball up, Cincinnati is so tough allowing you to make that next pass. Shot clock at seven. Shot clock at four. To the rack underneath. Shot clock violation. As Marquette couldn't get it off. And Cincinnati now leads by 17. Tom Green's Eagles in trouble early. Well, the frozen tundra of Green Bay is certainly <laughs> the same case here. In Not far away. Not far away, Larry, <laughs> along Lake Michigan here. It is icy cold in Milwaukee tonight. Beautiful facility, the Bradley Center. Seats 19,150. It's more like the Bradley Library right now. A little bit quiet. Hey, how about ESPN Full Court Pay-Per-View? 450 plus college basketball games. All the top teams, all the top leagues. Call your cable operator, Direct TV, or the Dish Network. It's not too late to get ESPN Full Court and get ready for March Madness. Jerry Krause probably has it, scouting all those young players for the Bulls. I would love to sit in on the first deal that Krause and Jordan do. Oh, brother. <laughs> I don't think either team's in much of a position of power to negotiate. Not right now. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> There's M Michael. Pete Michael back in the game. Play. Nice pass. Look at the one-touch passing. The finish Mar by Jermaine Well, Day. Marquette went to his own that time, and immediately the recognition by Cincinnati. Get the ball to the middle and make the pass, and Marquette's going to get a, an offensive foul. Fletcher made a terrific touch pass. John Harris knocking down Ryan Fletcher. Look at Harris. Go to the corner. Good trap in there by Marquette, but not quick enough. As Fletcher gets it and just drops an easy one down inside. I'll tell you, that's great ball, but little Tate finishing it off. Larry, that possession looked like a walkthrough on game day. Look at Cincinnati shooting 60%. Marquette is one of 12. Three more attempts, eight more makes on their home court. You know, most of those shots are coming right at the end of the shot clock, too. There's a travel. Nice Mark Johnson, a little slow, putting it on the floor. Curtis Shaw got it. Veteran crew, Steve Wilmer, Jim Burr, and Curtis Shaw today. Cincinnati better on the road than they are at the Shoemaker Center. You know, they shot 50%, 10 of their first 15 games this year, including seven straight. But they've gone under 50 their last three games in a row. Doesn't look like that'll be the case tonight. Yeah, but they've gotten a lot of easy shots on the inside. And uh, combine that with the fact that Steve Logan's been able to make those threes. Yeah, that's the reason they've got that big lead. Wardle. Boy, they are all over him. Evidently, they got the press release in Cincinnati that he's the conference player of the week. Great Good pass luck. again. Fletcher from Johnson, and then the follow, and that's a half dozen for Jermaine Tate. Any scoring he gives them is a real bonus. How about this? Everybody has scored just about, except for Kenyon Martin, who's that, hitting a breather that is right a now. Surprise. He is on the bench getting a blow right now. There's the double team. Henry scoots away from it. Stripped by Logan. Shot clock at 15. I mean, the Bearcats have claws on defense tonight. Wardle short with another three. They are just not giving Marquette any good looks at the basket at all. Put it on the floor. Somebody's coming after you. Pick up your dribble, and nobody can get to a pass. That's her on the perimeter. Kenyon Martin walks to the table. And the Marquette student section says, oh, boy, we really did well with him out of the game, didn't we? Here's Fletcher, back to the basket. Polonowski on his hip. Ryan Short with it. Aggressive attempted rebound, and Tate's got it, and he can't roll it in. Look at Jermaine Tate on the floor. Marquette up with it. And a foul on the backcourt. It'll be number two on Steve Logan. The crowd goes crazy. <laughs> Now the crowd at this point, well, you know what? To go crazy over I something. think Logan may have a legitimate beef right here. 
Look at Kenyon Martin laughing. The ball's rolling around on the floor. Polonowski comes up with it. Now watch this. He throws an elbow. It looks like he catches Logan right on the uh, chin. Maybe his chin fouled his elbow. I guess. Wardell Henry for Polonowski. Two points for Marquette. We are 12 minutes into this game, and it's their house. Here's Cliff. Polonowski not checking. It was 35. Great John switch. Miller. Here's Polonowski. Passed on the outside shot. Henry, the kick. Left wing. Yes, it's a three. John Cliff, and the drought is over. Bob, I think it was somewhere around 12 minutes between baskets. Fletcher scooping. Missing. Kenyon Martin scored now. Oh, and a good start for Martin. 25 to 5, Cincinnati. Kenyon Martin, there must be something in his legs that allows him to get up there. There's DeMar Johnson tipping the ball around until he can control the defensive board. Watch Johnson handle the basketball. Watch him handle it. They better stop him. Oh, he is so good. Oh, he's good. Olenowski getting there late and getting the foul. Indian. Get the basketball on the rebound and just take it full court. This is a guy 6'9 handling the basketball. Nobody challenges him. He says, you don't want to get me? I'll lay it up for you. Foul at the end. Uses the body beautifully to shield the ball away from Bolinowski, who gets the foul. And to the line, Jermar Johnson. Prep All-American, National Player of the Year last season. He has six after the make and the miss. It's over the baseline, and we've got a timeout in Milwaukee. The under eight-minute timeout, 7.14 to go. We said Kenyon Martin hadn't scored. Well, he has now. Number one in the nation, Cincinnati by 22 over Marquette. We're approaching halftime. And for the first time in 10 years, well, if you've looked for Carolina in the top 25, the Tar Heels folks are not there. A college basketball Wednesday night fever doubleheader. The Terrapins and Carolina Blue at 7. And then from the United Center in Chicago, those talented young uh, Florida Gators against Ed Kennedy suddenly struggling. Blue Demons of DePaul. And how about that ACC race? Larry Conley, look at Carolina down there in the lower division. Yeah, but how about North Carolina State and Virginia making their move? Herb Sindek and Pete Gillen getting their clubs and moving right up the line. But none of them are going to catch Duke right now. Boy, are they playing well. And Fletcher off the inbounds playing a basket from the right side. He scores, and that now puts six Cincinnati players in the scoring column, and they lead 29-5. to five. There's Cliff penetrating, stopping, and missing everything. Pete Michael the rebound. Oh, I don't think I've ever seen a first half so totally dominated by one basketball player. Fletcher. He traveled. You know, Larry, sometimes you'll see a team go on 8 to nothing, 10 nothing, but then the other team recovers. They yeah, come exactly. back to make it 4 or 5 at the half. This one shows no signs of getting close yeah, anytime well, soon. There, it's not going to happen right now. Watch Fletcher make this move with the spin move down inside. He just simply falls out of bounds and lets the ball go out of bounds. He slips right near the baseline. Okay, so they did something wrong finally. <laughs> they have been unbelievable. Well, it's the combination of really good shooting, good passing, and this defense is just so suffocating. Here's Wardle. Stopping, waiting, again, bouncing, and that's Clawson scoring. Well, they got the double team, so somebody had to be open. Good pass that time by Brian Ward. Ray Clawson hasn't played the last three games, but he always plays against Cincinnati because they know they've got some big fellas who can go in and spend some fouls on Kenyon Martin, Jermaine Tate, and Ryan Fletcher. Here's Michael on the wing for DeMar Johnson. There's Clawson with a steal. So the big fella, 6'11 junior out of Dixon, Illinois, makes his presence felt with a basket and a theft. I'll tell you how tough it's been for this crowd here at Marquette. On a steal, they got almost a standing ovation. Here's Cliff. A little packing out there on the perimeter. And a reach-in foul by Kenny Senefield. That'll be his first. Brian Wardle leads Marquette in scoring with 17 points per game. But something else he does very well is pass the basketball. Good jump stop right there. Ball fake inside. Another ball fake. And a good drop down pass inside. Going to do more of that as Greg, Greg Clawson finished it off. Got to find some open people. Cincinnati defense just not going to let it happen. Right now, Brian Wardle 0 for 5. Three of those shots beyond the arc. Cliff Namaka 
looked to slam and couldn't quite knock it in. Loose ball. John Cliff had it. A Curtis Shaw whistle. And good hustle that time. I'll tell you, Tom Green's not going to have Marquette standing around. Another one on Kenny Satterfield. Yeah, nice move here by John Cliff inside. He was just uh, a little intimidated by the fact that Cincinnati blocked so many shots. And here they are battling on the left side right in front of the Cincinnati bench. Watch how tough it is to get around those screens for Cincinnati. But once the screen is set, they really battle. Clawson tried to set one right there. I think he's going to pick up the foul. That he is. A little extension by his arms on the man flashing by. There are a couple of options you've got on a, on a screen. You either can go behind it or you fight through it. Cincinnati's awfully good at getting through those screens. See, it makes it tough on the screener, too, because he's got to protect himself a little bit when that guy's going through. Jermaine Tate back into the game for Cincinnati. They also check in Leonard Stokes, a 6'6 freshman out of Buffalo, who was an All-American last year. And he was Mr. Basketball in the state of New York over Kenny Satterfield out of the Bronx, Brother Rice High School. So they've got a young backcourt out there right now, but two very, very talented young men. There's Martin with a high pick. Good deflection as John Cliff gets in the passing lane. Satterfield gave that one away a little bit. He telegraphed it. The reason it was knocked out of bounds. But again, C Cincinnati makes it so tough on both ends of the floor. Watch this maneuvering on the inside. Here comes the screen, and it's a good one. One of the things that they do well. I've watched Cincinnati practice several times, and they do set great screens. Martin got Clawson off the floor. There's Jermaine Tate. He has been tough tonight. That's eight points for the 6'9 senior out of Toledo. Cincinnati Club averages 39 rebounds a game. They're going to be over that number tonight. And the rebounding margin, about a half dozen per game. Here's Cliff. Nice stop move. Now just nothing has fallen from the get-go here for Marquette. Satterfield speed makes this a two-on-one, and he finger rolls it home. Henry kind of backed off a little bit to allow Satterfield to go to the basket. I would have challenged the basketball and maybe make the pass at least. I don't think I've ever seen a game, Larry, at this level where the score was 33 to 7. That's what I'm saying. It's unbelievable. I, I'm trying to rack my memory here to think of a game where one team dominated the other so dramatically, and I can't come up with one. This has been incredible. Nice runner by Brian Wardle, his first basket. He was old for his first five. I remember the Globetrotters had a couple games like this. <laughs> Crossing the touch. Going out of bounds with it was Stokes. He stepped out. Marquette will get it back. Well, they got a basket last time down the floor. A little bit to build on as we go to the under four-minute timeout as the Conference USA Player of the Week, Brian Wardle, finally scores. Well, a young staff here at Marquette finding a tough going against Bob Huggins' punch right now. 33-9. Tom Green, first year here at Marquette. And he brought with him from uh, Michigan State, a guy who was a pretty good ball player there for Judd Eco. Dwayne Stevens. Dwayne came up to me, Bob, before the game tonight, and we were having a conversation. He said, Larry, you may not remember this, but he said, you were doing some games in the Great Alaskan Shootout when I was a player up there. I said, Dwayne, I do remember. He says, do you remember the family we went to have Thanksgiving Day dinner with? Because up there, it's kind of a ritual. I mean, when you're up there at Thanksgiving, everybody goes to the homes of the local people there, and they're kind enough to invite the players and the coaches and their fans to Thanksgiving Day dinner. And we all went in there. I said, I was so full of turkey, I couldn't even move the next day. Well, he picked the right place to get full and hang out. <laughs> Underneath, nothing but Bearcats. And a stop there on Namaka, who tried to score. There's the quick bouncer down at Jermaine Tate. He's looking for double figures. He's got it. Jermaine Tate with 10. He averages 5. And again, he's a role player who yeah. bumps people around, well, gets rebounds and defensive stops. Exactly. And Bob, that's what Bob Huggins was talking about with him today. I asked him about each player. He said, Tate is our best defender. He says, he's a guy I can put out there to guard somebody and not worry about it. Blocking foul on Kenyon Martin. Watch this on bounce. A strong dribble of Namaka. Yeah, good bounce pass inside. Now watch Tate with the maneuver on the baseline. The good turn. Even though he's got the hand in the face, he's still able to get the shot off and up and in. You know, this guy's really had a really troubled career. I mean, after he transferred from Ohio State, he had one year where he had to sit out, and then, of course, he's had both knees operated on. It's been very, very difficult for him to get back in the swing of things. And hopefully this year may be the year where he maybe gets up into the double-figure category because I think he's got the potential to perhaps play in Europe or the CBA and maybe eventually get into the NBA. He does for Kenyon Martin what Kenyon Martin did for Danny Fortson. Mm -hmm. He does the dirty work underneath that frees up the big guy to score. 
Here's Kenyon, thought about the 17-footer. Now he wants to set a pick on the wing for Pete Michael. A little two-man game here. Kenyon putting it on the floor. Didn't quite get the shooter's roll, but you can see what a soft touch he has. Good block out that time by Marquette. Here's Baroni, crowd favorite here. Nothing there for Cliff. Every time he looks inside to Harris, he's got Kenyon Martin on his hip, and then Jermaine Tate waiting to help. Baroni will retreat a bit. Shot clock, plenty of time, just now at 15. Top of your screen, that was Ryan Fletcher who just popped up off the Cincinnati bench. Now the shot clock's under 10. They're really going to start pressure. Dribble penetration, the Maka takes a hit. And that's two in a row from Kenyon Martin, and he just got himself a technical. There was no reason for that. Bob Huggins is really upset with Kenyon Martin. Well, way too animated was Kenyon on his reaction. Yeah, he really was, and there was no need for it. I mean, once again, you'll see the ball maneuver here. And Martin with a little bump, and even though it's a foul, take the foul. You've got a big lead. Jim Burr with the call of the technical. Watch it again. There's the bump. There's any question about the fact that he bumped him as he went across the lane. Kenyon, Kenyon Martin just got to relax. You know, if, he, if he'd let the gum in his mouth, he might have had a chance to get away with that. Yeah, maybe he wanted to get rid of it. <laughs> Namaka will shoot. These are the free throws for the foul. So he gets the front end of the one and one. Now their best free throw shooter, Brian Wardle, will step in and shoot the technicals. Bob, Bob Huggins, in his own professorial way there, explained to him why he didn't want him to have that technical. Brian Wardle. Yeah, that's one of those situations where you really have to control your emotions because Kenyon Martin wants to play. He wants to be out there on the floor. Now he picks up the technical, which counts as a personal against him. And he's too good a player to allow something like that to really dominate his feelings. Just let it go. Go on and play. Maroney on the wing. Cliff back to him. Portal top of your screen. The objective of the market offense is to get shooters in position. Cincinnati has not allowed them to do that, and there's another turnover. Well, again, the pressure by Cincinnati. Yeah, you know, you'd love it. You'd love for Tom Crean to look up and say, geez, we got something going here. Right now, he has nothing going. But Marquette's gone to his own. They're matching up. Better field down to Michael. Contact. And Pete Michael gets another one to roll home. Now he's finding so many openings against this Marquette defense. Here's Wardle. Short clip. Brought it down. Back up. It is almost impossible to get a clean shot down low against this defense. Well, if it, gets, if it doesn't get blocked, it gets altered. A minute 20. Tate. Ball hacked away from him. ESPN News coming your way at halftime. And we've got our halftime report featuring the Blazers and the Green Wave down in New Orleans earlier tonight. Top 25 just out in the last hour or so. Now the Super Bowl preview. How about Tennessee and St. Louis? A couple of upstarts in the big one next Sunday. Well, if you start the NFL season, you pick those two clubs. Somebody to look at you like you've lost your mind. Great years, folks. Congratulations to both those organizations. Here's Satterfield on top for Fletcher. Michael flashing, takes a hit from Cliff. For John, that'll be his first. So I imagine now everybody's going to descend on my city, huh? Atlanta, Super Bowl town next week. We've got an ice storm right now. They better wait for it to melt. That won't stop those Tennessee folks. <laughs> Bob Huggins will take his 30-second time out here. It's either use it or lose it late in the first half. A lot of hoops tonight on ESPN2. And later tonight, as we get into Monday, the 2000 Australian Open. Hewitt and Norman tonight. And number three seed Serena Williams will be in action against Elena Lidhouseva. ESPN.com, where you can find out more about tennis. Part of the Go Network. Go.com as the 2000 Australian Open gets underway. Little love game down there, mate. There's going to be some hoops down there pretty soon, Larry Conley. Indeed, there will be. Sydney this coming September, September the 15th, October 1st, the Olympics. Dream Team's going to stop off in Maui and train on their way to Australia.
Well, the kids came out in full force tonight, but Cincinnati has shut them up. On top to DeMar Johnson. Final minute, first half. 30 on the shot clock, so the Cats have plenty of time here to run something. Satterfield, dribble penetration, quick release over the hand of Fletcher, and Satterfield knocks it out. And the Eagles will have it now with 45 seconds to go. Some sort of conversation. Curtis Shaw's gone over the timer and the score. I'm not sure what he's asking for. I think he wants 35 on the clock, not 34. On the shot clock, that is. Ball just went out of bounds. Okay, and they waited an extra second, then started the shot clock. That's how they compensate. So there's a 10-second differential. You are so good. Well, you know, play-by-play -play guys have to keep track of this stuff, right? <laughs> X's and O's, those are yours. Now Michael. So Cin far, it's been all O's. <laughs> yeah. For Cincinnati. That's right. They have X'd out Marquette in the first half of this one. Larry, what does Tom Green tell his like, club you know, in the locker room? If you read my mind, I was sitting here thinking the same thing. I was looking across at the Marquette today. Tom Green's going to go into that locker room and say, guys, we just have to come out and play and play as hard as we can against a team that has just dominated them here in the first half. Michael the miss at the buzzer. Two more for Jermaine Tate, and he's got a big first half. In fact, Jermaine Tate leads everybody with a dozen. And at the half, it's total domination by the number one team in the nation. Jermaine Tate more than twice his average, 39 and 12. ESPN News in the halftime report, next. so-called tough place to play for visiting teams. Larry, did you have any trouble digging out some first-half highlights for the Bearcats? Bob, can you say total domination? Yeah. It was. Total domination. total domination. Let's take a look at some of the highlights of the first half, and of course, it's all going to be Cincinnati. Two of their key players in that first half, DeMar Johnson. 6'9", taking the ball to the basket, a two-guard. How many 6'9 guys you know that can put it on the floor and take it to the hoop the way he does? But once again, he can pass the basketball, too. Look at that nice maneuver on the inside, and then the drop down dish to the left side. But it was Jermaine Tate who actually led this club in scoring with 12 big points in the first half. Here's his little turnaround baseline jumper. Bob, it was all Bearcats. Well, there are many slump in shooting evidently over. As we mentioned, under 50% their last three games, they go 53 here. Look at Marquette. Four for 26. Nothing else really matters, really, when you look at the numbers. When you have that kind of disparity in shooting. And the Conference USA Player of the Week. Maybe Kenyon Martin by the time this week is over. Brian Wardle, the current reigning champion. And he's one of eight so far. And because the... Yes, he's got the jacket on. Bob may be planning to sit him down for a while after that technical foul, which was his third personal near the end of the first half. As now he's opened up in a man-to-man. Marquette looking it over. Not much pressure right now from Cincinnati. Wardle flashes to the near side. It squares up for the three. He needed that. Brian Wardle now, one for four from three-point range. Two for nine on the night, and he's got seven points. Golden Eagles again back into a man-to-man -man defense. We'll see if Cincinnati picks up their offensive game where they left it in the first half, which was just about everywhere on the floor. Logan for Fletcher, now Michael. Now back to Logan. They're posting up Jermaine Tate, who had 12 points, five rebounds in the first half. Good ball movement by Cincinnati. There's Demar Johnson. Or Fletcher. He'll turn and face. Hands in front of him from... Got to go up. Aluma Namaka. There's the jumper. Got it away in time, and a rebound on the backdoor. Good defensive stop by Marquette. The board by John Cliff, who gets it back from Cordell Henry. Didn't look like Cincinnati was running much of an offense in that half-court game they had that time. Maybe I'm looking at perfection from the first half. Yeah, we're spoiled, aren't we? Yeah. Conference USA, Cincinnati 6-0 if they win this one. So they're a game ahead of 4-1 Marquette. Brian Wardle warming things up. He's got 10. It's 39-18 as Marquette goes 6-0 to open the second half. Well, I'm not saying there's any kind of run being made, serious run right now at Cincinnati, but they're not playing the second half the way they did the first half. Here's DeMar Johnson leaning in. Almost got a charge. Loose ball. Fletcher misses. There's a push-off. It was either Wardle or Cordell Henry. Has to be Henry. Just pushing Jermaine Tate to the floor. 
It's about the only way Henry was going to rebound over Tate. Just to make sure he's on the floor. Bearcats get it back with a fresh 35. A minute 50 out of halftime. Gives it back to Logan. Now he'll flash out to the perimeter and get them in their half-court offense. Logan hit his first three three-point shots tonight. Michael, the left-hander won't go. Look at Tate crash. Almost got the offensive board. Three on two. Henry, Wardle, Faith, Bottle. Yes! Not counting. Jim Burr waved it off. He traveled. Now they're going to say the foul occurred while he was on the floor. Okay. The crowd doesn't like it. And a 30-second timeout for Bob Huggins. Tough break for Marquette right there because I, I thought Wardle was going up when he got fouled. But Jim Burr was standing looking at it right underneath the basket and decided no, he was not going up. Look at Wardle's last game. This is against UNC Charlotte. 31 points, 9 of 16 field goals. More importantly, he didn't miss with three points. How about UNCC with that win against Louisville on Saturday at Louisville? St. Louis goes to DePaul and wins. You know, prior to yesterday, Conference USA clubs were winning about five out of every six home games played in the league. And yesterday was a disaster for a couple. Big game shaping up this Thursday, though, between Cincinnati and Louisville. You and I will have a chance to look at that one. Freedom Hall on a Thursday night. Ooh, that's big. 9 o'clock Eastern on ESPN. Namika swings it up high to Cordell Henry. Wardle can't quite hit his third in a row. Rebound underneath. Wardle on a pass by John Miller. And then the ball bumped out of bounds by the Bearcats. Well, Bob, what if it was Tom Crean said to his club at halftime, they've come out and been an entirely different basketball team than what we saw in the first 20 minutes. They've shot the ball well, they've defended well, and they're actually getting on the glass with Cincinnati, who out-rebounded them badly in that first half, 27 to 13. Logan watching Henry. There's the flash for Namaka. Stopped by Fletcher. Now, the now they extend. Yeah, they, the, the defense is picking up now. Well, you can see it happen. And they know when they're getting down low on the shot clock as well. Here's Wardle. Rejected take. Back up, Namaka. And pulled down by Fletcher. Good stop by the Bearcats. Here's DeMar Johnson. Out of control. Got it back. Draws the foul. And the freshman a little lucky there. As he didn't have a real good idea of what he was doing on the break. Didn't have a whole lot of room to operate on that baseline when he went down that left side. Logan gives the ball up. And Johnson's trying to maneuver around the inside. He tried to get around Mueller there. But got the ball back and threw the foul. Bob, are we going to get to the day in college basketball, probably in the not too distant future, where we're going to see 6-9, two guards as commonplace? No. <laughs> <laughs> but this guy is unusual, isn't he? Well, you think about it 40 years ago, I mean, uh, you didn't find very many 6-2, 6-3 guards, I mean, just 40 or 50 years ago. I mean, here we've got one in college, and this guy's going to be a tremendous player. Well, time will tell how long he sticks around. Already some talk in Cincinnati about him going pro because of the good defense by Steve Logan. That's a five-second call. Well, I would hope not. I hope he sticks around because he's going to be fun to watch. Watch the foul again. It was a nice maneuver right there, trying to put the ball between his legs in the turn. Michael on the perimeter with Logan. They're going to post up Tate High. Fletcher right wing. He gives it to Michael, who sealed his man off. Good block from the backside. What a recovery by John Cliff. Here comes Cordell Henry, leading the break. Thought about shooting. Now he will. Way long. Didn't even get iron. That's why he didn't try it the first time. Evidently, Tate with a tie-up and Miller. We've got a foul that appears to be on Namaka of Marquette that will send it back the other way. Well, Miller in there battling, trying to help on that backboard. Watch this terrific block on the backside here by John Cliff. I want to tell you, that's a pretty athletic move right there. John Cliff at 6-2. Well, they like his defense out on the wing. That time he showed us a little inside play as he skied from 6-2. Marquette with a little different look defensively. They went to a half-court trap. 
There's uh, Travel. Pretty good double team there by the Golden Eagles. Now Marquette giving Cincinnati a little of their own medicine, coming out with a little half-court trap and uh, making sure they get the turnover, and they did. Tate gave it up on the turnover, and Marquette gets the ball back. Almost four minutes into the second half. Bob Huckins still has a very significant other sitting on his bench. I wonder if we'll see Martin come back at all. He has taken the warm-up top off. Here's Wardle on the drive. And the kick right to his head coach, not to his point guard. Kenyon Martin up off the bench. Maybe a little bit of doghouse time here. We'll see if and when he comes back. Into this season, Brian Wardle was a 37% three-point shooter. Larry Conley, he's over 50% now his junior year. In fact, he leads Conference USA in that category. Let's watch a couple of his shots right here. Cincinnati backing off the defense. Wardle play, makes the play. As long as he's got time to set those feet and square up, he can shoot the ball as well as anybody in the nation. Cincinnati gave him that opportunity on those two right there. Already with 10 points. Reaching toward his average of 17. A couple of rebounds. Brian Wardle, Wardle four in the first half. Brian Wardle won the Conference USA Larry Conley Award two years ago. And that was what? He was the sixth man of the year. Ah. A guy close to your heart. And there's Jermaine Tate with 14 now. Wordle has gotten better. I mean, he averaged 10 points per game in 98, 12 last year. He's now got it up to 17. So each year he has progressed offensively. Help, help. Nice try. Namaka quickly from the left baseline. Well, there was an opening there, and he took full advantage of it. We went right along the baseline. There was no help from Cincinnati. A rare defensive lap. If you pass from Michael down to Tate, stumbling out of bounds, he throws it away. Here they come, full on three. Namaka leaving it for Wardle. And Fletcher steps out to prevent the three. Well, he's hit a couple there earlier, and uh, Fletcher says, nope, not again. Well, that's a big guy. It's 6'9", stepping out with that wingspan to keep you from shooting at the perimeter. Namaka lost it. It's because of a Jermaine Tate reach-in, and for Tate, his second. Well, the week ahead for both clubs. On Wednesday, Marquette goes to St. Louis. Suddenly, the Billikens making some noise with that win at DePaul. I think Lorenzo Romar is going to be a very nice addition to the city of St. Louis right now. He's got the Billikens going. And then Thursday, Larry mentioned it. Bearcats at Freedom Hall. You know who's played well for St. Louis? Justin Love. Their 6'2 uh, senior guard has played very well. Had a good weekend for them. And yeah, he can score. Wardle. He was just determined to get Pete Michael in trouble. Michael doesn't like to call it for Shaw. And for Pete, that'll be his second. Bob, I'm really pleased Perry Clark is playing as well as he is right now with uh, Tulane. They're, they're playing extremely well. Nice move across the lane right there. And you see the foul. Wardle a little bit more aggressive on offense in this second half than he was in that first half. Technical foul. We've got another one. Pete Michael. And just like Kenyon Martin, his third foul will be a T. So that's two T's on Cincinnati. And that's really not like Pete. He normally is one of the cats who keeps himself under control at all times. Wardle knocks it down. That'll be 11 for him. Well, whatever it was, the magic words set off Curtis Shaw because he rung him up quickly. Wardle might hit four in a row here. Now, those are the two free throws from the foul. Now he'll shoot the tees. And he makes these two. They're down by 19. I mean, it doesn't sound real close, but relatively speaking, <laughs> it's within the Compared to where distance. we were? Yes, sir. This game's got 14.35 to go. We have seen stranger things happen. Michael sits down, a chat with his coach. Kenyon Martin is still out of the game. That may not be the case for long. Here's John Cliff. A basket here really would give them a lot of impetus. Namaka, yes! But he traveled. That's a good call. Jim Burr had a good angle on the yeah. call from the wing. Namaka kind of put the ball on his hip as he was going inside. It looked like one of those NFL running backs going through the line today. Johnson for Satterfield. Posting up. Fletcher. Nearly a steal by Cliff. 
Look at Logan flash right through the double team. Johnson back to him. Now the swing for Satterfield. Whistle away from the ball. It appears to be a Namaka who is riding the hip of Ryan Fletcher. And for Aluma Namaka, that'll be his second. Watch right here. Here's what happened. You know what? That ball kind of grabbed a little bit as Namaka went down that lane. He did take three steps, though. Call was accurate. Satterfield, short. Offensive foul. And Kenny Satterfield gets his third. Things a bit unsettled for Cincinnati right now. Watch Satterfield right here trying to make that baseline move. Well, that is great defensive help on the inside. John Harris right there in great position to draw that charge. Well, they get a basket here. They're down 17, maybe 16. Cliff fighting to keep control. Satterfield with good, good exterior defense. Brian Baroni hands it off to him. Wardle on the near side. They can't release it. Can't get away from DeMar Johnson in that 6'9 wingspan. Now they switch, and Logan guards him. There's a two-man game. Harris throws up a prayer. Bumped away by DeMar Johnson. He's looking ahead. He's got DeMar. Traffic. Baroni. And a foul on Marquette in transition. Well, now that we know who's in the Super Bowl, ESPN and ESPN2 will give you live daily press conferences from the side of Super Bowl 34 in Atlanta. It starts tomorrow, runs through Super Bowl Sunday. Catch Sunday NFL Countdown on ESPN, 11 a.m. Eastern next Sunday. We will be all over the Titans and the Rams getting ready for the Super Bowl. Who do you like? Oh, you know where I'm from, Larry. <laughs> I know. There's the Rams and a foul. What a terrific move inside. Namaka with a chance for three. He didn't get the last one going down the lane, but that one was all his. He should claim ownership to that particular move. That was a great one. He took the blow and still got it to go down. Baroni with a good pass. Namaka with a finish. Boy, did he take a blow. Fletcher committing the foul. Kenyon Martin back in the game. Failing in the three-point play. There's Cliff. Can they get two more? Wardle will take it out on top. For three! Here they come! Wardle with 16. We've got a 14-point game. A steal! Here comes Wardle again. He waits, dribbles, turns, and it's taken away from him. Here's Logan. Anybody going to catch him? No. But Baroni tried. He got there as quickly as he could, but Logan, very smart with the basketball, didn't give it up. Now, this, is, this is 29, 12 and a half to go. Excuse me, this is a totally different basketball game than what we saw in the first half. Well, this is what you and I expected all evening. Exactly. Wardle in trouble. To the double team. Cliff squares. Three. Got it. Satterfield was late getting there. He was trying to help on defense. Got him wide open. They're Got not that. chipping away. They're bombing away. 45-32. And Dermot Johnson misses. Ahead. Harris. Baroni designs on finishing. Goal ball ending. This place is going crazy. Cincinnati timeout with 11.57. Bob, watch again. The Maka misses the free throw. Look at the rebound by John Cliff. The ball fake. Wardle says, nope, I'm not going inside. I'm going outside the line where I've been comfortable. He nails another one. His third three in the second half. Ball movement to the other side. John Cliff saying, Brian Wardle, me too. Bottom in the net. And this place exploded when that ball went through the net. Look at Baroni. 11.57 remaining. The Golden Eagles have flown right back into this one. In a four-minute span from the under 16-minute timeout to the under 12-minute timeout, 
Marquette outscores Cincinnati 16 to 4. And uh, the free throw shooting, or excuse me, field goal shooting a little bit better. I would say 7 of 13 in the second half for Marquette. Over 50%. Boy, have they really picked up the pace. What was the largest margin, Bob, that we saw uh, in the difference between the two clubs? Well, it was high in the 20s. It was 22 at the half. Kenyon Martin, but a whistle before that. Does he ever get up? The spring in his legs is incredible. Watch down underneath Cincinnati maneuvering with the basketball on the outside. The good lob pass down inside. Lamar Johnson trying to get it, and Martin trying to finish, but the foul went to the other side, and Lamar Johnson with a couple of charity stripes. To look at, David Diggs on the foul. Johnson swishes it. Lamar with nine on the night. The biggest lead was the halftime lead, 39-12. And then you folks might remember, Waddle came out and hit two threes, and they've been on the comeback trail ever since. So the smoke clears here, and it's a 12-point game with 11 and a half plus. I hope Tom Crean taped that message that he delivered to his club at halftime. That's something he'll be able to use his, for his whole life. I'm a go against Tate. Baroni in center field and a travel down in the corner. Now the coaches told me Brian Baroni, kind of like his dad, but the fire burns a little bit quieter, they say, than it does inside Tony. Solid basketball man, Tony Baroni. Absolutely. Fun days at Bradley and then Texas A&M. Here's Satterfield with Baroni watching him on the perimeter. Alley oop! Kenyon oh. Martin, what Did a catch! Did you see that catch? Catching it with the right hand, gathering himself while his body's floating in the air, bringing both ends together and jamming it. That's what only, a great catch. Only his second basket of the night. Here's Cliff blowing by Johnson. Dumping it off, Baroni digs. Well, look how quickly Cincinnati closes out on the shooters. You're right. They just don't give you the opportunity to look at the basket. A ball reversal like that, Larry, should give you a shot. And they, it, 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 they help so well on defense and then recover. Peroni leaning. Missed the iron with it. On the floor tape. Ball finds its way to Kenny Satterfield. Bouncer. Michael. Yes. And that may spell an end to the Marquette run. Cincinnati gathering itself out of the timeout now. Got to do with another great pass. Now Marquette wants to stop it with a 30, 10 9 remaining. Bob, take a look at this maneuver by Kenyon Martin in the air. Now he goes down inside. We've got him ISO'd right here. Look at this. They forget about him. Look at that catch with the right hand and then getting himself underneath the basket. You can't coach that. That is nothing but athletic ability. What a great catch. Well, this is a club 17 and one. Their only loss to Xavier. And they have been perfect other than that. How about UConn and Syracuse? Maybe the perfect, the perfect point guard matchups on Big Monday presented by Bud Light. Then we go to the Big 12 for the Buffs at Lawrence and the Jayhawks 11th after Missouri hammered them on Saturday. You know they'll be hungry. Colorado State, the Rams, and the running Utes of Rick Majerus. And they go up to number 19 this week in the top 25 just announced a couple of hours ago. You're telling me there's a terrific player at Colorado State out there that no one has heard of. Cedric Goodwin. Look for him tomorrow night at midnight Eastern. Stay up with us. Jimmy Dykes will tell you all about it. That kid can flat out play. Well, I hope Jimmy will allow you to talk a little bit. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Harris. Nicely done. He stayed with it. And John Harris has his first basket. 50-36. Right. Marquette back into that half-court trap again. It's a 1-3-1. Cincinnati handled this pretty easily the first couple of times they saw it. Satterfield nice over on the wing. Michael, plenty of time. I tell you, he doesn't have much art, but he just shoots laser beams. And Pete Michael has 11. Good spacing that time by Cincinnati. They really spread that zone out, and they've got good shooters out there, Tate being one of them. How about Michael? 65% from the field his last eight games coming into this one. Here's Henry. Wardle, quick trigger. Well long. Jamar Johnson. Well, that's great hustle. It'll go back to Cincinnati. But working hard down there, 6-2 John Cliff. 
looks like the Bearcats may have withstood that onslaught that Marquette just threw at them to uh, start this second half. Well, they got the under 12-minute timeout. Cincinnati did on the goaltending call of all things. Right. So, you know, that helps them. Maybe if play continues without that call, another possession or two, and Marquette would have been even closer. Whistle away from the ball. And it looks like it's on John Harris of Marquette. That would be his fourth, and that would hurt their presence around the iron. Watch the baseline cut right here. Can allow that guy to get through right there, and uh, wow, Harris just simply went through it. Lamar Johnson going to the deck. At the line, Lamar Johnson, freshman out of Riverdale, Maryland, by uh, Maine Central Institute, where he played for Max Good last year. Knocks it down and into double figures he goes. His best conference USA game so far back in December when we watched him get 23 at the Keel Center against the Billikens of St. Louis. He had only five in the first game between these two, January 8th. But he's got 11 now. But consider the fact that Kenny Satterfield from our Johnson was so highly recruited coming onto a team that had so much experienced players coming back in their lineup. I think it's really helped them develop because they weren't thrust into a situation where they had to play immediately. They simply grew with this team. I think it's one of the reasons why they've been so successful. The Satterfield and Johnson have just matured as the year has gone along. Well, Satterfield will have to leave. That's his fourth foul. He will sit down with two points on the night, a couple of rebounds, a handful of assists. And Steve Logan, who shot Cincinnati out to the early lead, will come back in. There's Logan, who had three threes right off the opening tap. Cordell Henry knocks it down, his first points of the night. A four-year starter, teammate of Quentin Richardson at Whitney Young High School in Chicago. Henry had a great game against DePaul, 21 points. In fact, it's a, it was his only double-figure game since December the 4th. Well, I guess that would be the only thing against his best buddy, the Q. Yep. Man-to-man defense by Marquette. They've gone away from that half-court trap that they were using. Good spin move. Michael, left-hander, kept alive. But Kenyon Martin couldn't roll it home. I think Eagles about to make another run. Wardle. Oh, oh. Goaltending as Kenyon Martin rejects it into the fifth row. I don't think I've ever seen a shot rejected that far. <laughs> Unbelievable. I mean, it's goaltending. But my goodness, look how far this goes. <laughs> I'd just like to play volleyball against him. Ooh, what a great volleyball player he would be on the net, huh? I'd be cowering in fear. 55-40 Cincinnati. Martin receives it, and he was fouled from behind. John Harris. I tell you, Kenny's teeth will foul him out. Kenny's got some teeth guards in there. He may have to change colors a little bit. <laughs> that dual look in his mouth is a little strange. But John Harris is gone. In the process, Marquette loses some of their athletic ability, their rebounding strength, and a guy who plays some pretty solid post defense. So they get David Diggs back in there, a sophomore out of Dayton, who's really more of a shooter than an inside guy who can bump people around. Like John Miller back in the game for Marquette. John Miller, a walk-on three years ago. Great story out of Cedarburg, Wisconsin. Big kid at 6'11", 232. Here's Kenny Martin. What kind of a free throw shooter is he? 66%. But here's the scary thing about Cincinnati. He doesn't have to score a lot for them to win. You know what's happened a couple of times this year when they, when they didn't have his scoring presence? And other guys have stepped up. And we've got about eight different guys in this Bearcat club that could step up and get 20 for you any night. Canyon with a half dozen, 7.55 remaining. This ball is out of here. Well, Marquette is winning the second half, but they lost the first half by such a wide margin. 
can they make the comeback? We're in downtown Milwaukee at the Bradley Center, where this year the Eagles are 10 and 1. Their only loss at home to Dayton. Larry Conley, do they have enough left in the last eight minutes? I think it's going to be very, very tough because it looks like Cincinnati's reestablished themselves. Mark Kick rose up and uh, really made a charge at them, but tough to go after the Cincinnati club with all that depth. 16 points, the second half run advantage. There's Wardle, 20 for Bryant. Coming off that 31-point game against North Carolina Charlotte. But when he's got time to square up, he really is a very, very good shooter. He just kind of allowed him to get squared up. Mr. Junior, he'll be back next year. One of Tom Green's building blocks to the future. It's nice to hear that his junior's going to come back. Yeah, isn't that refreshing? Martin for Johnson. Wardle stays with it. Kenyon surveying the situation. Logan to Tate. Everybody but Michael has touched it in this possession. And there's a foul by Namika. That'll be his third. Yeah, Namika uh, unable to stay with Tate in that post position down there that low. Go back and take a look at Brian Wardle's shot again. He can have 20 points with a nice maneuver right here. The jump and the fall back. You know what that shows me is one thing is that he can't get open to get his own shot. He does not have to have a screen to get open. Jermaine Tate rolls it in. 15 for Jermaine. He had 14 in the midnight game a week and a half ago. We saw the Bearcats play Ohio. Coming off a 10-rebound, three-block game over Memphis. He didn't have to score that night. Kenyon Martin took care of that. And there's the long rebound for Michael. He just fires it back out to Logan. Lock running down under seven minutes on this Cincinnati possession. They led 39 to 12 at the half. And by the way, that tied a Conference USA all-time low point record for a first half. Martin, the turnaround. And along with it, he's been knocking those shots down. Tate short. So there's the long and the short of it for the Bearcats. And here comes Cordell Henry. Three. Yes! Boy, did he pull the trigger in a hurry. That's a confident shooter that will walk down against the defense has been so tough tonight. 58-45. Cincinnati may need to make a shot here. Down to Johnson. Wardle on it. Rebound. Back door. John Miller. This could be a 10-point game. Here goes Henry. And Logan. Logan fouls him on the way by. Three fouls on Steve Logan. I tell you, they get this thing back to 10 or so. We may be in for an interesting five and a half to six minutes. But what I'm seeing out of this Marquette club is a lot of grit. This is a basketball team that I thought was put away by Cincinnati. After they held off Marquette in that second half run, now Marquette's trying to make another run at them. Well, they're going to have to hit their free throws. Marquette, a mediocre free throw shooting team. Mediocre being kind. At 63%. It's interesting, though. This year, when they shoot 15 free throws in a game, they're 10 and 1. Henry, no problem. And we've got an 11 point game at 58 47. Six minutes to go. Tonight, shooting free throws, the Eagles are 11 for 14. Ah. The next one could be magic. Golden Eagles, once again, still the man to man defense. Martin on top, Logan. The swing to Michael, Wardle watching him. The steal! Here comes Henry. Johnson back. Henry leaves it. Miller, yeah! Great pass by Henry. He got the steal. He got the assist. And Marquette's making another run. They are back to within nine. And Bob Huggins needs a timeout. Unbelievable grit and comeback ability by these Eagles of Marquette. Well, Tom Green's got to be awfully pleased with the effort that his club has given in this second half. Let's go back and take a look. Watch Cordell Henry get out into the passing lane, anticipating the pass, then the finish here with the pass on the other end. Well, that's terrific play. Miller with the basket. But you got to give Cordell Henry a lot of credit. I mean, a steal and an assist on one play. Hey, Larry, we're just starting. We've got another big week of hoops on ESPN2 coming up Tuesday. We're going to take it to St. John's, the club of 
Mr. Mike Jarvis. Number 23 in the poll this week. They take on Rutgers. They knocked off Villanova today. And then it's Xavier and number 24, Temple. Now, that should be something. Pepe Sanchez and company. Darnell Williams leads the X-Men from Cincinnati. That's all coming up. 7.30 and 9.30 Eastern Tuesday night for more on college basketball. Log on to ESPN.com. I always get a kick out of Pepe Sanchez's numbers. He'll end up with three points, 11 assists, and nine rebounds. Yeah, and three or four steals. Yeah. Can Marquette get another stop? Look at Polonowski get on Martin. Lamar Johnson back on the perimeter for Satterfield. Here's Michael. So now he's getting very conservative now, a little tentative. Marquette just sitting in there. Martin, left-hander. Miller the rebound. Oh, Johnson took it away from him. Fletcher missing. Miller again on the floor. He can't find a teammate. What a great hustle. Cincinnati gets it back. Oh, that is great hustle. Both clubs. Right in the middle of it all, 5-9, Cordell Henry. Boy, they were giving up bodies on the floor everywhere. I'm talking about both teams. Martin with the miss right there. Watch the slap away from Miller right there by DeMar Johnson. Fletcher was a little unsure of himself. Miller comes back with the ball, doesn't have possession, tries to make the pass, and Johnson gets in the way again. Now we've got a foul on Polonowski on a shot by Kenyon Martin, and John Polonowski gets his second. Let's go back and look at the end of that play. Here's DeMar Johnson. Now watch him go to the other side. Look at the floor burns by John Cliff here. Johnson right on his back. Henry comes over. Polonowski, everybody's involved. I love that. I love that when guys go on the floor. And then Martin, seventh point of the night. Or Marquette, checking back in. Aluminamica, the former national teamer out of Sweden. Played in Newton, Kansas, his high school ball before becoming a Golden Eagle of Marquette. Kenyon Martin has eight on the night, six of those since halftime. 4.40 remaining. 60-49. It's a four-possession game. Henry blows by everybody. Nobody to dish it to, though. And I'll tell you one thing, you never see a guard shoot a layup against this club. Satterfield, the miss. Miller, look at this guy rebound. Miller's done a terrific job the last three or four minutes down on the defensive glass. Cincinnati getting no second shot. Double post high screen on the left. Henry uses it. He misses off to the left. Long rebound for Kenyon Martin. He can put on the floor. He's got a trailer. Michael, beautifully done. Oh, that's a, that is great basketball between two of the better players in all of the country. Great pass by Kenyon Martin. Good follow-up there by Michael. Now it's back to 13 at 62-49. Wardle thought about the three. He got Martin and Michael to step out. And Kenyon Martin will get his fourth foul. Marquette has really utilized those screens out front. That time, Wardle got to the other side, and Kenyon Martin and Pete Michael were trying to get to him as quickly as they could. You saw Kenyon Martin walk through your screen there. Kenyon will sit down with four. I don't think he'll be out very long. And to give him a breather, Jermaine Tate checks back in. As we mentioned, the Eagles have to hit their free throws. They're now 12 out of 15. That's 21 on the night for Brian Wardle, who had a grand total of four at the half. Wardle missing. Tate the rebound. Now, will run down near the three and a half minute mark on this Cincinnati possession. Bob Carpenter, Larry Conley at the Bradley Center, Milwaukee. We don't know how much you enjoyed the first half, but we've gotten our money's worth since the break. There's Michael keeping it alive. Wardle. The loose ball for Baloney. You see the work of John Cliff in there? I mean, he, he was about 6'2", going up against Tate, who was about 6'8". Well, he's a tireless worker, a former role player in this club who's now a leader. He's a three-point shooter, and it just rimmed out on him. Wardle rolls it in. Ryan Wardle with 23. It's 62-52. And guess who's back up at the table? Ryan Baloney, the foul. That'll give Kenyon Martin a chance to come back in this game. Satterfield with an excellent job of handling the basketball against Baroni that time. Hard to get the ball away from Kenny Satterfield. When you come off the streets of New York, you know how to handle the basketball. 
Getty out of Brother Rice, one of the great high school programs in all of the nation. Maurice Hicks, his prep coach last year in the Bronx. That club, Brother Rice, finished number two last year in the USA Today High School Bowl. Fletcher leaves, Martin's back. This for an 11-point UC lead. Satterfield's got them both. Well, as long as Bob Huggins has two of the best players in the country, he's in pretty good shape. It's an 11-point game, but he's got Kenyon and Pete. Well, we're used to seeing NBA guys around the city of Milwaukee. Nice pro town. George Carl is here tonight. The Bucks head coach. This is a great basketball town. Of course, the days of Mr. McGuire, Al, 295 wins in 13 years. They won it all with an NCAA championship when they beat Carolina in 1977. Names like Bo Ellis and George Thompson, Butch Lee, Tony Smith, Dean the Dream, the Dream Memminger, one of the great nicknames ever. Sat there and watched that NCAA championship as we look at Sam Cassell, one of the players for the Milwaukee Bucks. What a terrific year he is having. Guard out of Florida State. And we, we remember Sam well from his days in Tallahassee. Under Pat Kennedy, now coaching in this league at DePaul. Here's Cliff, quick catch, quick on the dribble. Wardle, open, three, long, Johnson a touch, brings it down. What a dimension he brings to this club. Bob, that, that, would, that would have been such a big basket for Marquette. That would have gotten them within, uh, what, eight? Yes, sir. That's how quickly the fortunes turn. 2.40 remaining. A tale of two halves in Milwaukee tonight. Elio! Oh, center field to Kenyon Martin. Great communication between two outstanding players. Just a lot pass up there, and Martin knew what to do with it when it got around the rim. It was almost as if they were reading each other's mind. Here's Wardle on the dribble drive. Martin stops him. Another turnover. Jamar With 2.15 to go, that little sequence right there might have ended the evening for the Eagles. But what a fight they put up in the second half. Johnson. Wardle on him. They can run some clock now. They'll go under two minutes now on this possession, leading by 13. They led by 27 at the half. I thought at that point they were uh, an endangered species, these Golden Eagles. <laughs> and a foul. DeMar Johnson closing on him was John Cliff. It'll be John's second. Let's go back and take a look at the nice pass by Kenny Satterfield. Once you put the ball between his legs, the little spin right here. Come back, and there goes Kenyon Martin. Great lob pass. That's a, that's a set play. I mean, it's not like they just invented that play right then. I mean, they do that a lot in practice, but it has to be a communication between the guard and whoever's going to the basket. And, of course, those two guys do about as well as anybody. And you still have a freshman point guard who threw that pass without looking at the man he was aiming for. Great deception by Cincinnati and Sattersfield. And a great finish, of course, by Kenyon Martin. A dozen for DeMar Johnson. 145 remaining in a 14-point game. Cliff for three. Now oh, they're misfiring now. Maybe those legs a little bit more tired than they were five or six minutes ago. Yeah, but two great efforts in this second half. I mean, they made two rushes at Cincinnati and got themselves in a respectable position. Now Wardle goes long. Miller gets it on the wing. Cliff. He's long. Wardle back door. And for Brian Wardle, a 25-point evening. 965 now in his Marquette career. Well, what's going to happen now? Marquette's going to foul. Baroni just picked up another foul going up against Kenny Satterfield. So Satterfield will walk to the strike. What a nice visit with Tom Crean's daughter today. Yeah, little Megan was at the game today. She came to practice with Dad. Yeah. And college hoops tonight coming up, just like it was before the ball game. A look at the new top 25 in college basketball. Carl Ravitch and Jay Phyllis. What was that illustrated thing I saw? That was pretty cool. Illustrated, huh? Those Duke guys are so smart. Uh -huh. Kenny Satterfield with four. Look at that nice, nice cash look, too, on Sunday nights, huh? Yes, Carl and Jay looking very nice in the studio <laughs> tonight. And Kenny with five. Cincinnati will set the stage for a big Thursday night game at Freedom Hall against the Cardinals of Louisville on ESPN. Nine o'clock Eastern. Down to the one-minute mark and a foul in the backcourt again, Brian Baroni. That'll be his third. 
Cincinnati will go to 6-0 in Conference USA. Marquette will fall to a record of 4-2. So there's the game at Louisville, South Florida. Then we'll follow them to Charlotte the following Thursday. And they'll go down to Birmingham and take on the Blazers. You gotta be very careful against that UNCC club. They can, they can start lighting it up a little bit. Joby Thomas, who's an outstanding three-point shooter, and for Maine Gardner, two of the reasons that Louisville went down this past weekend. Uh, we'll go down there and visit with Bobby Lutz in a week and a half. Yep. And he's center field with a half dozen. Steve Logan back into the game for Cincinnati. Marquette goes to the Keel Center, and then to Charlotte, and then to Hattiesburg. That will be a tough stretch. So they'll go into that stretch with a conference record of four and two before coming back home, where they have been almost unbeatable. Wardle, he had to hustle to catch that ball. That's what he called going to the basketball. And now Marquette uses a timeout with 50.2 seconds remaining. Brian Wardle's had a pretty good basketball game, particularly uh, this uh, second half. Larry, you and I, we're old timers. We love to go back in time. How about some of those upsets yesterday? Well, take a look at Southern California beating Arizona 87 to 2, and USC now is in first place in the Pac-10. Big upset by Mississippi over Auburn. That was Mississippi's first win in the SEC. How about the win by Missouri over Kansas? Though Kansas has always struggled taking a ranked club into Columbia. And of course, Purdue beating Indiana. That's a big win for Gene Cady's club. And some thought Purdue would get into the top 25 with that win. They are just out of it. AM takes care of the Cowboys yesterday. I understand that's uh, one of the very few times Texas AM has beaten a ranked club. Take a look at North Carolina having lost their fourth game in a row. Against the good Florida State team, playing much better since the 1st of January. And, of course, that win by uh, St. Louis over the fall. That, that game was in Chicago. There's Baroni with another backcourt foul. So he gets three in a row, gives him four. 47.4 seconds remaining. And the Bearcats leading by 13, 69-56. Stepping to the line, Steve Logan. He's only scored two points since the early minutes. This kid takes care of the ball, though, as we mentioned. 12 turnovers, his last nine games coming in. His assist-to-turnover ratio, as Larry mentioned, three and a half to one. He's got 12 tonight. Jermaine Tate will come in. All you need to know about college basketball coming up next. College Hoops tonight on ESPN2. And Logan now with 13, three over his average. 71-56. Miller to the rack. Takes a hit from Tate. And Jermaine with his third. Pop Huggins looks at Tate. He says, don't even get close to him. Just let the clock go. Of course, when the ball goes through the net, it stops in the last minute of the play. Well, Cincinnati won this game in the first half. They went out 12 to 2, 19 to 2, 27 to 5, 33 to 9, and then led at the half 39 to 12. Those were the scores at each timeout called in the first half. John Miller with three on the night. Bob, I really think uh, tonight Tom Crane can take something away from this game, even though he's going to go down to defeat. I mean, he can point to his club's comeback twice in this second half. Roney for three. Got it from the corner. They're going to practice their late game offense and timeout calling ability here as Crean and company <laughs> will spend another one with 35.2 seconds to go. Larry, there are lots of things you can take out of a situation like this. Yes, sir. 71 60 Cincinnati. A doubleheader Wednesday night on ESPN. Let's take you to the ACC, number 21, Maryland, and North Carolina. Ed Cota, Brendan Haywood, and Joe Forte. They are too good to be playing like they have been lately. At home, maybe all they need. And then we'll have an interesting non-conference game as the United Center in Chicago will see DePaul take on number nine, Florida. A guy that Larry Conley loves, Mike Miller, Teddy Dupay, and of course, Y2Q is what they call the DePaul attack in Chicago. That's an interesting matchup between Florida and DePaul, the fact that they're stepping out of conference play here in late January. And also, two classes, the sophomore classes of both of those two schools are terrific. You have a chance to tune in and watch that one because those are two excellent basketball teams. And I think DePaul might be on the verge of turning it back around. I mean, they've lost three of their last four games to unranked clubs. 
Because this is a basketball team with an awful lot of talent, and I don't think Pat Kennedy's going to allow this to go on. John Cliff on the foul. Cincinnati at the line again. And again, it's Kenny Satterfield. Larry, I know it's still early. It's only the 23rd of January. But as you look ahead a month, maybe six weeks, what is your feeling right now about this Cincinnati club deep into March? I, I just don't see them losing more than one or two more games at that. Uh, they're just so much better. You know, it's kind of rem reminiscent of Duke last year. You remember how Duke just ran rough shot through everybody? Ran the table in the ran ACC. The, absolutely, and uh, didn't lose a game throughout the entire ACC season last year, including the tournament. But it's that kind of situation. I, Duke, uh, Cincinnati reminds me a great deal of Duke last year. Well, that'll be a backcourt violation because the ball hit Brian Baroni on its way back. And so with 21.9 seconds to go, the hard-fighting Eagles will go down to their sixth defeat of the year, but they'll still be in pretty good shape in the American Division of Conference USA. Their record will be 4-2, and two, a game ahead of DePaul, Louisville, and Charlotte. St. Louis checks in at 2-3 and three after their win at the Horizon yesterday. But I think to further amplify that point about Cincinnati, I think there are a lot of clubs out here that have got a chance to get at them. I think Stanford's one of those clubs. I think Mike Montgomery's got a terrific club out there. And uh, I think Tom Izzo's Michigan State club, once they get everybody together, and Cleves has worked into them, into the uh, into the way they want to play, I think they've got a shot. Bob Huggins shaking hands with Tom Crean, a 72-60 Cincinnati win. And the number one team in the land goes to 18-1. They are now 6-0 in the conference. And there sits Marquette. Still in pretty good shape. And Larry Conley, again, Marquette takes some things out of this ball game as they make the big second half comeback. This team was down 27 points at the half, 39 to 12. And they fight back to within nine at one point. A shot or two here and there. They could have made it even closer. Kenyon Martin does not have the huge scoring night. He does have 10. And for Tom Crean's Young Eagles, well, maybe some good days ahead. They fought their hearts out here at home tonight. Our final score with College Hoops coming up next. It's 72-60 Cincinnati. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.